Welcome to Political Forum for this Wednesday, May 8th, 2013. Please join me in welcoming our guest for today, Alderman Ray Colon of the 35th Ward. Alderman Colon, thank, thank you. you for being on Political Forum. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Political Forum is a live interactive show brought to you as a community service by, by CAN TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a CAN TV board member. During the next 25 minutes, we will try to get to as many as your calls. So if you have any questions for Alderman Colon, please call us at 312-738-1060. Alderman Colon, please tell us about yourself. Well, I, um, I, be before becoming Alderman, I worked in the nonprofit sector. So um, I've had a life of um, public service. I worked with the Boys and Girls Clubs of Chicago for 12 years. And um, I started at the Logan Square Boys and Girls Club, and I worked um, in Pilsen Little Village. I worked in Uptown, um, and eventually made my way back to Logan Square as the director. Um, and I also went, worked in the downtown office and the corporate office as a volunteer coordinator. Um, I also worked with the Chicago Park District. I was a uh, area manager, and I supervised 45 parks on the northwest side of Chicago, um, which included you know, Humble Park, Holstein Park, Eckert Park, um, really lots of major park facilities throughout um, the communities. Um, did that for five years. Um, then I ran for office while I was in the Chicago Park District in 1999, um, and I lost, but I did get 40% of the vote, um, which motivated me to come back and, and try to run for Alderman um, four years later. Um, but prior to um, doing that, I also worked with the um, YMCA of Metropolitan Chicago, and I was the executive director um, for the Logan Square YMCA, and I also did that for four years um, before becoming alderman. So, and and um, during the time I was at the YMCA, um, basically had um, shut down the old Logan Square YMCA and raised seven and a half million dollars to construct um, the new Logan Square YMCA, which is now called the McCormick um, Tribune YMCA, and it's it's located in Lawndale and Cortland. Um, on the northwest side of the city. So I've had a career of public service. Um, working as an alderman, it's really a continuation of all the things that I've learned um, in just dealing with human conditions, um, working with children and families, trying to connect people with services. Um, and, you know, in my job now, actually dealing with citywide legislation and trying to get people to navigate through the city departments when they need help. Uh, whether it's a business getting a license or whether it's a resident who needs a certain amount of service to um, improve their quality of life, um, this is the things that we do. And my staff, uh, I've got a really good staff uh, who's available to assist people. Um, now that we're redistricting and, and the new ward boundaries are changing, um, we get a lot of calls from people who may or may not live um, in the 35th ward, but our staff serve everyone. We, we work kind of on an uh, at-large basis, so if if someone, um, whether they used to live in my ward or they're going to or they never did, uh, we still try to accommodate what their needs are and, and try to connect the dots for people and, and help them out. So um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Let's talk about the 35th Ward. Uh, as you will see on the screen, that is the old map? That is the old map. And, and the old map, um, you know, the southern border of the old map is on North Avenue. Um, the northern border is Irving Park, um, the western border is Avers, and the eastern border is um, Western at Logan Boulevard, where we just um, completed a skate park a few years ago under the expressway, and we are now working with the community and creating a dog park um, in that area. So that is the old 35th Ward. It has a little bit of Hummel Park. It has mostly all of Logan Square. Uh, some of Avondale, and a little bit of Old Irving. Um, but that changes with the new uh, redistricting in the new map, um, which is that. And um, the change there basically cuts off all of Humble Park from the 35th Ward and um, probably about half of Logan Square um, from the 35th Ward. It expands um, going west to Hermosa, so along um, Armitage, it actually goes to Costner and Armitage, where my uh, western border used to be Avers. Um, and then on the north, where I used to go to Irving Park, I now go to Ainsley, 
uh, which is just one block north of Lawrence Avenue. So um, I'm picking up more of um, Irving um, and I'm picking up Albany Park um, and Hermosa. So that's kind of the trade-offs of the new ward. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, we, we are working with constituents. The, the city council committees are in transition. So, um, for example, um, the zoning committee is acknowledging all the new wards. Um, and the licensing committee is beginning to acknowledge the new ward maps. Um, streets and sanitation is still working with the old map. So, um, so as we're kind of sorting out through um, this transition, we're just basically working with everyone who is looking for service because we know that um, we don't want people to have to make three calls to get, you know, a garbage cart or to get something simple done. So uh, we try to be a one-stop shop for everyone that contacts our office. So when is the new ward take a uh, new ward map take effect? Well, legally, it it takes effect um, in twenty fifteen at the next election, but um, since the ward map was passed, um, you know it's been it's been acknowledged by most of the city council committees, mm -hmm. and also the last election, the presidential election, um, everyone in Chicago vo voted out of the new ward map. So. Um, so the Board of Elections, if, if somebody looks at their most recent voter registration card, um, there may be a change in the ward that they voted in versus the last time that they voted. So, um, so the Board of Elections has already moved um, to acknowledge the new map, and the city council committees are, are moving in that direction as well. I believe we have a caller on the line. Caller, okay. what is your question? Yeah, thank you for taking my question. Uh, my question is for the alderman. Um, I'm just a little bit curious. Uh, I was reading an article and they showed that the parking meters, um, they, they brought in $139 million in revenue last year, and uh, that's up uh, $30 million from the previous year. And I'm just curious, is there going to be a cap on on how much these meters increase every year, or is there something we can do as um, as, as a Chicago um, residents for, like, to give us some kind of break? Yeah, the, uh, the parking meters, there's... Um you know there there is an increase built into the market parking meter deal with the uh, the private company which is um, Chicago parking meters um, but that levels off and um, once all the increases go in place and I think the, the next increase will probably be the last one but after that it's all based on cost of living um, so the meter rates should plateau um, at this time but um, whether you're interested or not I did vote against um, the the parking meter deal um, which there were 40 aldermen who voted in favor of it and five who voted against and five who either were not there or took a walk when the vote came up. Um, so, but one of the things that's happening now as of today, um, the mayor introduced um, his amendment to the parking meter deal. Uh, it hasn't been voted on and so uh, where the last deal, the city council only had three days to deliberate before voting on the deal. Um, this time, um, the mayor introduced it today, and we will um, be deliberating over his amendments to the parking meter deal for the next month. Um, some of the things that he's proposing is to extend um, the hours. Uh, most of the neighborhoods um, have a uh, parking meter until 9 p.m. Um, there's the proposal asked to increase that to 10 p.m., and then in the central business district downtown, um, that would go from 9 p.m. till 12 midnight. The trade-off for that would be that um, Sundays would be back to being free parking um, for the city of Chicago, which is something that we used to do. Um, I have I can talk all night about the parking meter because I have very strong opinions about it. But um, you know, parking meters were always meant to be for parking regulation, not for um, revenue generation. And so, um, you know, when the, this meal was passed, um, I think that. You know, we took the, the, the mission and, and the reason for having parking meters into a whole different direction. Um, and so I'm hopeful that with this amendment that the mayor is making, um, that we have an opportunity to deliberate on it and, and uh, to make a better deal. As he said, he's, he's trying to make lemon out of lemonades um, or lemonades out of lemon or bad lemon, however, however that's uh, stated. Um, but, you know, it's something that the city council is going to have to pay attention to. People are going to have to... Um, really go in there and do their job and evaluate um, this next parking meter deal. Um, people who voted in favor of it last time are really um, 
you know, acknowledge that they voted on a bad deal and um, you can't reverse the clock, but we're stuck with this for 71 more years and we're going to have to make the best of it. So I think that um, some of the proposals that are out there is a good step in the right direction. Um, but we have to, as a city council, look at it more closely, evaluate it, and make any recommendations we can to improve it. Thank you, caller, for that question. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, good evening, Alderman. I have a question concerning um, Mayor Emanuel's looking to um, hike the fines for bicyclists who uh, break traffic laws. Now, as a pedestrian, I've, I've seen and came close to being run over by a bicyclist. As a driver, I've almost got an accident uh, with a bicyclist. So do you agree with um, the hike in fines with that curb bicyclist, so to say? And then number, the question number two is, how do you think police, if this passes, would enforce it? I, I, if you could just repeat the question, I could not, I, I could not hear um, your initial question about, I heard that the mayor wants to increase, what was it? Uh, looking to increase fines for bicyclists. Who are breaking traffic laws? Well, you know, the um, I, I'm not sure if that's the right way to go or not. I do know this is that um, you know, as and and having a ward that covers Logan Square and Logan Square is the bike mecca. I mean, we have probably more cyclists than having Milwaukee Avenue um, cross through there. I get probably you know just as many or more complaints as anyone as it relates to um, people being able to share the road. Um, I think that is, you know, as we continue to invest in um, infrastructure in our city for cyclists, as we continue to create protected bike lanes and, um, you know, the Bloomingdale Trail, for example, which is going to be break breaking ground um, next month in June, as we start to segregate the traffic of cycling and motorists, I think we're going to see probably more of uh, pressure on cyclists to um, obey the rules of the road. And I think uh, right now there's there's not a lot of enforcement. People um, who ride their bicycles um, ride them the wrong, uh, you know, on the wrong side of the street, on the sidewalks, um, you know. And at the same time, there's there's motorists out there who seem to have it out for cyclists. Um, you know, I'm both, so I, I spend time in the car, but I'm also, you know, on the street. And um, so, you know, I don't think cyclists should be penalized because you're being good to the environment. You're you're out there cycling. You're you know, you're promoting good health. Uh, you're being good to the environment. Um, but at the same time, we need to coexist, and everybody needs to follow the rules. Um, and you know, cyclists for the most part are not held accountable for not um, following the rules of the road. Nor is the infrastructure really in at a place where. Um, you know, you should be penalized because we don't have um, protected bike lanes everywhere. We don't have, we haven't segregated, um, you know, our bicycle traffic with our motorist traffic. So I think it's something that we need to continue to look at. And, um, but I, I can foresee that we're, there's going to be um, probably a lot more objection from the cycling community where there was no oversight before. Um, I think we're going to probably see more enforcement when it comes to following the rules of the road, both for the safety of the cyclists, um, and the safety of everyone else involved. So we have another caller. Yes, we do. Caller, what is your question? Sí, sí buenas tardes, concejal Colón. Buenas tardes, ¿cómo buenas estás? Buenas tardes, bien, bien, gracias. Mire, te, tengo una pregunta. Eh, más o menos, ¿qué actividades tiene usted en su, en su área para nuestros queridos de la tercera edad para este verano? ¿Para, para este verano? Para este verano, para mantenerlos ocupados fuera de sus casas. Este, ahora si va para mi website, este, raycolong.org, está ahí tenemos información de todos los programas del verano, este, tenemos uh, campamento de verano y este, eh, el distrito de parque ya ha empezado su, este, registración para todos los programas del verano. So, es ahí puede empezar primero, pero si quiere este, ir para mi website, ahí puede encontrar, encontrar más información sobre los programas para los niños y familias por este verano. Bueno, está bien, gracias. Gracias a usted. Gracias por su llamada. Just to translate for the rest of the viewers, uh, the caller asked about what are, are there any programs that are available for uh, youngsters that are 13 and over. And um, Alderman, you can feel free to translate that in English. Yeah, yeah. Basically, <laughs> I said, you know, we, we do have some information on the uh, website, which is at um, www.raycolong.org, but I did mention that um, uh, summer camp registration has already begun 
uh, for the park district and um, it's not too early to start registering your children for summer camp unfortunately uh, many parents wait until school is out and then they frantically start looking for programs that are already filled in um, the other thing that I didn't mention um, in Spanish is that the um, the park district does have um, you know some scholarship programs available and um, they do uh, provide some relief for folks that are lower income and cannot afford those programs so I encourage you to you know to get on to the Chicago Park District website as well you're watching Political Forum, a community service brought to you by CAN TV. Um, if you have any questions for Alderman Ray Colom, please call us at 312-738-1060. Um, and uh, if you want to reach um, Alderman Ray Colon, um, his phone number is 773-365-3535. And he's, his ward office is located at 2710 North Sawyer Avenue. Um, and his website is raycolon.org, and his email is ward35 at cityofchicago.org. Alderman, um, please tell us about any developments that are going on on the 35th Ward. Well, um, we've got quite a few. One of them is, um, is going to be the first Olive Garden in the City of Chicago limits. Um, there's a Kmart on Kimball and Addison Avenue. Um, in, a, in the Avondale community, and um, that particular Kmart has a ginormous parking lot. Um, it's actually double the size of what a normal uh, big box retailer would need. And so on the far western corner of that lot, um, we've been working with the community. We've had several meetings. Um, we've had both Sears Holdings, who are the folks that own Kmart, and also Darden Restaurants. Um, they're out of Florida, and they have um, other restaurants like um, not just Olive Garden, but also like Red Lobster and, and, and other restaurant, family-oriented restaurants like that. And so they looked at this site and decided that this um, would be the preferred site for the Olive Garden, the first one in the city of Chicago. It's right off of the Addison exit of the Kennedy Expressway. Um, so that's going to be a very exciting um, project. And then just a little further south from there, um, Northeastern Illinois University, they have a program um, and, an, and a, a campus that targets the Latino community, and they've been doing it for 30 plus years. It's called El Centro, and um, they're currently on Belmont and Pulaski, um, but they are now moving to Kimball and, and Avondale. And so um, right now, um, permits are underway. The, the land has been secured, and we've already had our groundbreaking ceremony there. So this is going to be a new state-of-the-art, um, energy-efficient, building um, that is going to be a campus and um, the nice part about it is that you know it's, it's along the Kimball bus line so you can both transport yourself from the uh, central campus and to the main campus um, you know really just going down the street so that's an exciting program um, there's been a lot of people in our community who have benefited from Northeastern University and and both um, in getting their degrees there and getting continuing education there so um, that also should uh, create more economic development for the Avondale community. So um, that's just two I can think of. And I, before I go on, I know that, that we have another caller, so I want to acknowledge them. Uh, caller, what is your question? Hi, uh, I was just wondering, it, like, it seems that in my neighborhood, the vacant houses are kind of a source of a lot of criminal activity and stuff like that. So I was wondering, are there any programs set up to address that and sort of what should I do just if I see some people loitering around them or looks like there may be people inside them, like should I call nine one one or three one one? You should you should definitely call three one one. And and you know, because of the whole foreclosure problem, you know, we've had issues on blocks where um, you know, they've been foreclosed on, they've been abandoned or boarded up and squatters moving in, gang members moving in. It's created a great nuisance for the neighborhood. Um, it would help Actually, if you call 311 or if you called your local alderman's office, and we could track down and find out what the status of the house is. Many times the bank can give us information and let us know what process within the foreclosure process that that, that house is in. So, um, so that we need to you know, provide you as a neighbor some information. We also try to work with the neighbors to try to make sure that um, people are watching the house. We try to make sure that the house is secured. So if there are people breaking in there, uh, making sure that we um, secure the building. Um, we also try to get the neighbors to cut the grass, take the um, 
oi newspapers off of the porch um, and make sure that at the house looks like that it's it's lived in as much as possible and that there's people watching and and that's really the key um, eventually I mean I, th I think the economy is getting better we're seeing signs of that just through the activity on zoning um, we're also seeing that there's developers out there who are targeting um, foreclosed um, buildings and and um, buying them and restoring them and flipping them so there is um, this this kind of a uh, development um, trend going on out there where a lot of these distressed properties um, are getting targeted by people, um, investors, and, and putting them back on the market. So, but the place with to start is to call 311, report the building. Um, we could do, if, if you talk to your local alderman's office, we have a query and we can find out how many calls for service has been made uh, for that particular property. We can give you a status of where it's at. And again, if there's some um, gang activity or illegal activity, that is really, you know, threatening the quality of life on your block and in your neighborhood, then we want to be aware of it and we want to know um, and we want to work together with you on resolving those issues. Thank you, Carla, for that call. Thank you. Um, Alderman, um, it's that time of the year for city stickers. Uh, can you please tell us more about um, online purchasing? Well, I mean, you could purchase. There's, there's lots of different ways, and the city clerk, uh, Susana Mendoza, has done a wonderful job of making city stickers available um, to the general public. Now, um, many people like to go to the ward offices for the city sticker sale. And so um, we're going to be um, kicking off our city sticker sale very early this year on May 30th, at the end of this month. So people will be able to go to 2710 North Sawyer and, uh, and purchase your city sticker um, for your, your vehicle, for your motorcycle. Um, we also sell um, the residential parking passes so you'll be able to buy your residential parking sticker there um, there was a time where there were two different stickers and now the city sticker actually um, they have the ability to put your residential zone number on your city sticker so that you only have one um, and so but the other thing is that our aldermanic office sells the um, residential zone passes all year round so if you um, we work with the city clerk's office so we're, we're one of the few offices that if you did want to buy um, you know your your daily passes then we make those available to the general public as well um, you're always free to go online and purchase your your city sticker online a lot of people don't realize that you don't have to wait in a line outside if you go online at home um, but some people want to buy their city sticker that day and get it immediately and so again if you're interested in, in buying your city sticker from our office um, our city sticker sale is May 30th 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Thank you, Carla, for that question. Uh, Alderman, please tell us about your newsletter. Oh, well, we have a very extensive newsletter. It, it covers all of the activities going on in all of our neighborhoods and surrounding areas. Um, it lists job opportunities. It lists um, new businesses that are opening up or special deals that you can get in different businesses. We have a special section on animals. So if there's um, volunteer opportunities with animal control, um, you know, deals that you can get on getting your dog or your cat washed. Um, and then every week I put a message, I, I highlight that newsletter with putting a message on something that's important to me. Our, our last week's newsletter um, really highlighted the Hairpin Lofts, which is on Diversity, Kimball and Diversity. Um, it's a six-story building that um, has live workspace for artists um, on five of the floors. On the second floor, there's a community art center and on the, on the ground floor, it's retail. And um, just last Thursday, I went with the developer and uh, we picked up the uh, 2013 um, Preservation Excellence Award for the rehabilitation of this um, particular building. So I'm kind of bragging a little bit, but I, I did. Um, that, was, that was the last newsletter and that's what we wrote about. But we write about lots of different issues relevant to what's happening to people's lives in Chicago. So um, I invite you to get onto my website and sign on to our weekly newsletter. Thank you, Alderman, for that information. Uh, thank you, Mar thank you, Alderman Colon, for being a guest on Political Forum. Oh, okay. Thank you, viewers, for your calls. Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. Please join us next Wednesday for another edition of Political Forum. Have a good evening. Good night.